What's up, everybody? I've got some exciting news for you today. Ableton has just announced the release of the 10.1 update for live. You can tell Ableton's been carefully listening to customer feature requests because this update is absolutely jam-packed with exciting new features, many of which I've been wanting for a long time. As a certified training center, our teams had advanced access to it. Over the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk you guys through every single one of the new features and show you exactly what it can do. This video is more of a general overview, but our team of certified trainers back at Warp Academy has also done in-depth videos on some of our favorite new features and effects. We've popped those guys into a playlist for you, and you can hit that up by clicking the link directly below this video. What you're about to see here is a pre-release beta copy of Live 10.1. Just a heads up, because the final version may have some slight differences. Now, just before we dive in, I wanted to let you guys know that if you haven't picked up Live 10 yet, our customers at Warp Academy can qualify for a 40% off educational discount. For more info on that, I popped a link below the video in the description. All right, with that said, buckle up and let's do this. All right, so here it is, Live 10.1. If you already own Live, this will be a free update for you. One of the first updates is user wavetables. You can now import any audio file as a custom wavetable in Live's new wavetable synth. You can import any sample and wavetable takes care of processing and trimming it for you. Now, although this is sweet, a lot of audio samples just don't make great wavetables. This is why in a synth like X for Serum, you have a full wavetable editor. Wavetable building and processing tools unfortunately aren't part of this update for live. That'd be incredible in the future and maybe they have that planned. But for now, one of my favorite things to do is import wavetables that were actually built for Serum. They're totally compatible because they're just standard wave files and there are a ton of them out there. So to get you guys started, I've got a surprise for you. Our team of sound designers over at Warp Academy built a custom collection of 60 wavetables for you and we're giving them away for free. Here's what they sound like. You can just drop these into Wavetable and they're perfectly set up for you because they've all been created and pre-processed in Serum. Click the link in the video to grab all 60 of these custom Wavetables for free. The ability to import user wavetables is a huge step forwards, and I'm amped that you can now expand your sound design options with Live's flagship synth. If you guys are digging this so far, I'll invite you to join the community by subscribing to our channel. Also, smash that notifications bell if you want to get the heads up on all the things right as we post them. 10.1 has added a new audio effect, the channel EQ. We've got a more in-depth video on this in our playlist on the update, but I'll give you a quick intro to it now. Channel EQ is kind of like a Zen minimalist EQ, really useful for quick on the fly mixing adjustments. Even though it's pretty simple, at least on the surface, Ableton has really honed in on the core things that you're gonna need. Let's check it out. It's got a high pass filter, that slopes at 6 dB per octave, and it's fixed at 80 Hertz. This is useful because you're typically gonna cut all the low end on everything in your song except for your kick and bass to avoid cluttering up the bottom of your mix. Then it's got a low shelf and high shelf at fixed frequencies that can boost or cut by 15 dB. The low shelf is set at 100 Hertz if you're boosting, and if you're cutting, it moves up a little bit from there. The high shelf is actually a sweet combination with a low pass filter when you're cutting. It moves from 20K down to 8K the more you cut. This actually is pretty useful because you can have one knob to clear the air range of tracks in your mix. So elements like vocals, synth leads, or hi-hats have room to breathe. Finally, you've got a mid bell that can boost or cut by 12 dB, and this one can be swept from 120 Hertz up to 7.5K. My first impression is that channel EQ will be a great sidekick to EQ8. I can see myself using it a lot because it's so streamlined and fast. 
Obviously, it won't replace EQ8 for surgical or more detailed work, but it'll definitely be a complement to it. The second audio effect Ableton's added with this update is a new delay aptly named, wait for it, delay. <laughs> I've got a full video uh, that's a super detailed one on delay in our live 10.1 playlist, so make sure you check that out next. The link's below the video. I'd always felt that there was a gap in the previous lineup of live's delays, and delay fills it perfectly. Let's check it out. Could you give me a break? I'm just a fool. It's kind of like a hybrid between simple delay and the ping pong delay. In fact, it appears that it's actually replaced them because neither the simple delay nor the ping pong delay appear anywhere in the browser in 10.1. Looking at the interface, you've got your standard left and right delay channels that you can BPM sync and either have them set independently or linked together using this button. You've got the offset parameter that adjusts the delay timing by fractions so you can get that kind of swung out delay feel. The thing that I missed the most in the old simple delay was having a bandpass filter on it. They've added this in now, which is super useful for blending the delay into your mix. The filter makes sure that you can tame out the highs and the low frequencies to make sure that the delay is more transparent. Could you give me a break? I'm just a fool. You've got full XY control in the display as well as a sweet modulation section for automatic movement. On the right, you've got four modes. Now, those of you who got a little investigative with the previous Simple Delay realized that if you right-clicked the title bar of Simple Delay, you could reveal these. But a lot of users, I imagine, never found this stuff. And so Ableton's moved this to the front panel. You've got Repitch, which is my pick of the bunch for kind of analog delay behavior because the pitch will slide as you change the delay time, causing rising or falling effects. Lots of cool artifacts to be had there. Fade and Jump are a little more vanilla and simply crossfade or hop immediately to the new delay time settings. Then you've got a ping pong feature that bounces the signal back and forth, as you'd expect, between the left and the right channel. Now, the most exciting feature is this little infinity button down here. And what it does is freezes the delay so it has infinite feedback. That's absolutely ace. We've got a major overhaul to automation with a ton of new features and creative possibilities. If you're in automation mode in arrangement view, you can select some time on a track or automation lane then right click to reveal 10 new shapes that can be inserted. This means you can now get crazy LFO like detail out of automation in Live 10.1. These shapes give you possibilities very similar to the performer in Native Instruments Massive or in the drawable LFOs inside of Serum. Really, really ace stuff here. Again, we've got a full detailed video on this in our Live 10.1 playlist. It's linked below the video, so make sure you tune into that to learn more. But for now, let's do a quick run through of some of what you can do with these shapes. We're giving away this full project file, so hit up the link below this video if you want to grab it and follow along. Around the edges of the time you have selected, there are automation transform handles that can do some sweet edits. Let's take a peek. You can adjust the automation vertically or horizontally like this. You can flip it. 
And there's also a stretch function where you hold down the shift key while grabbing the middle automation transform handle to do some kind of warping time stretch effect with the automation. If you grab the handles in the corners, you can skew the automation. There are modifier keys here too. Holding down Option or Alt will create a symmetrical mirror type effect. We've also got some changes to the way recorded or drawn in automation works. In Live 9 and 10, when you drew in off grid or freehand automation or recorded automation off a MIDI controller, you got hundreds of breakpoints, which made editing them after the fact really cumbersome. Well, now in 10.1, you've got way less breakpoints, and it also recognizes curves that you can easily edit when you're done. It kind of creates these automatic C and S shapes. Plus, if you've recorded in automation like this, you can simply right click and use the new simplify envelope command to smooth things out. That's killer. Next up, you can enter exact values to breakpoints by right-clicking and selecting Add Value or Edit Value. This is amazing because there have been tons of times before when I've been mixing and I want to get something super, super exact. And it's so nice to be able to just click and type in the exact value that you want. And finally, the Envelope Editor can now be toggled between showing automation and modulation in Session View Clips. And all the modulation now has its own distinctive color. All in all, with these upgrades to automation, I'm super pumped. The creative possibilities are really opened up here, and I'm stoked for what you guys will be able to do with this. We've got a bunch of new keyboard shortcuts for zooming, scrolling, and generally getting things laid out exactly how you want to see them. For these to work, you have to make sure that the computer MIDI keyboard is set to off. This is something in Live 10 that gets a lot of people, especially with trying to show or hide automation, pressing the A key. If you have that activated, then the keys can't work properly because they're being routed to send MIDI information into the computer. In Arrangement View, the H key will get all your tracks to fit the available vertical screen real estate. This also works in the MIDI note editor, where the H key will vertically size the region that has notes. In the upper right hand corner, you can also see there's a couple of new buttons. And the H button here will do the same function, and it's also MIDI mappable. Pressing the W key in arrangement view will fit the entire song into view. Pressing the W key in the MIDI or sample editor will adjust things inside the clip so you can see what's there horizontally. There's also a MIDI mappable W button right next to the H button, if you want to do that with a MIDI controller. The Z and the X keys zoom into and out of a selection, allowing you to get quickly detailed and then resume your work in the exact same zoomed state you were just in. You can use the Option or Alt key with the plus and minus keys to zoom track height in arrangement view. This works on single tracks or multiple tracks at the same time. Okay, next up, uh, when you're in automation mode, you can reveal clip fades real quickly by pressing the F key. The S key will also solo tracks in both session view and arrangement view. Pressing the U key in arrangement view unfolds selected tracks. Now, if you've got a supported trackpad, like on a MacBook here, there are a bunch of enhancements for you. You can pinch to zoom. Option and Alt at the same time as the pinch gesture will modify that for you. And this also works inside the MIDI editor. Let's bounce up and take a look at the arrangement overview. This is now resizable. There have also been some clip detail improvements. Ableton says that uh, the visualization of clips in arrangement view has been tweaked uh, with some adjustments to the clip borders and refinements in the way the items are colored. And if we take a look at how MIDI clips are working in arrangement, we can see that when you have notes, if there's only a few notes in the MIDI editor, these appear larger in size. In Live 10.1, we now have the ability, this has been something I've been waiting for for a while, to freeze tracks that have sidechains. 
So before this, if you had a sidechain compressor routed on something, you couldn't freeze that track. You had to set up another audio track and record it, or you had to put the sidechain compressor on a group track holding the track with the sidechain uh, effect that you wanted. So this is actually really, really big. Um, anytime you have sidechain routings, you can just go right ahead and freeze them down and flatten them if you want. Next up, we're almost there, guys. We have VST3 support. Now, I'm on Mac, so I use the AU versions of plugins, but if you're on PC or if you prefer using the VST versions, we now have VST3 support. And last but not least, you can now export tracks or groups with the return and master effects printed in and applied. So this was something you couldn't do before. You had to export the returns or record the returns separately and mix those together. So if you're somebody that, for example, likes to do your mix downs in another program, or if you're exporting stems for like a remix or a stem pack or something, and you want to print wet versions of your things that are running through the effects on your returns or on your master, you can now do that easy peasy, super sweet. All you have to do is go to your export audio video menu and you'll select under the selection area, under the drop down menu, you'll pick your selected track or tracks that you want to export. And then just below there under rendering options, you'll see include return and master effects. And you can toggle that on or off. Don't forget that you can grab live directly from warpacademy.com. And if you're a customer, you can qualify for that sweet, juicy 40% off educational discount. There's a link directly below this video so you can learn more about how to do that. Also, our team of certified trainers over here at Warp Academy has done a whole series of in-depth videos on some of our favorite new features in the 10.1 update. We've put those guys into a playlist for you guys, and the link for that is directly below this video as well. I'll catch you guys there. See you soon.